Well, joining us now is public affairs analyst Shijibumi Adebi Bennett. Thank you for joining us and sorry for the mix up <laughs> earlier. Thank you for having well, me. when you look at the statistics, 90 million, 90, 94 million, it's almost half of the 200 million population who are said to be within the bracket of uh, this uh, poverty level. How worrisome is this uh, figure for you? Yes, it's um, a very worrisome figure because we're talking about 45% of our population. And um, you know what poverty does? There is prevalence of um, diseases. And um, we'll have a situation whereby corruption and um, crime will also thrive. So but by the time you're able to get people out of poverty, because you know, there is a saying that the, an hungry man is an angry, angry man. man. Absolutely. So, and what do we mean by this index? Um, if we're looking at $1.9 per day, we're talking about 690 naira um, in a day. That means um, we have a situation whereby 90 or 94 million people they spend build. less than mm. that in a day. <clears throat> so looking at that, it's, it's really, really worrisome because that means these people cannot even have um, a good meal in a day because a good meal in a city like Lagos will cost you nothing less than 800 naira in a day. So that means 94 million people or 90 million people cannot have that. Mm. So and um, because um, it's a problem that did not just start yesterday, it's been over the years over the years and the fact is we have not really um been committed and been very very vigilant about when you ascendancy. say committed some would tell you that uh, the, the the government says it has spent over 500 billion in terms of the social intervention, intervention programs, programs yeah. over the period of i think four years or more now and there is, uh, a, according to the report, about 120 million, if care is not taken, might also fall into this gap in the next few years. Are you saying that the measures being put in place by the government has not been as effective? Obviously. Obviously. Because for me, the challenge is because over the course, maybe we've had time, we'll be comparing what China did and what India, India did. But um, I find a solution whereby the federal government is pulling in a direction and the states are not keying in. Mm. Because what have all these other countries done? There have been agricultural revolution. It's not just going back to ag agriculture. It's about expanding agriculture, new mechanisms, like what India did. Mm. It's about um, urban subsidy, just like the welfare program. The government has really copied a lot of all these things, but the states are not keying in. And another factor that I see is the fact that we're running uh, a federal, a, a federalism like a unitary government. Mm. So it's, you know, when people talk about restructuring, those are the things I think people should be talking about, not the power play in restructuring. So this, because of our warped structure, it has not really helped. So we, we have situation whereby the, um, the, the, the states are not doing anything, mm. in quotes about the agricultural revolution. They are not doing anything in, in terms of industrialization. What the, states do? Mm. the states have to key in, in the fact, uh, the fact is, if we have every state churning out something in terms right. of um, agri revolution to the people, just like KB is doing, if you can feed your people. Someone said um, last week that, how can a big country not be able can to feed, feed its own people, well, well. cannot be able to clothe its own people. We, and the direction of the federal government is going into those two directions. Yeah, now. we have to leave it at this point. Shijibumi, thank you for your time thank on you TBC Breakfast. Me. Joining us now is a public affairs analyst, Shijibumi Adibi Bennett. Thank you for joining us on TBC Breakfast. Thank you for having me. Now, the World Economic uh, Forum gave three points uh, if Nigeria is to really deal with these issues, and I want us to quickly dissect that. One of it was to invest in girl-child education, because uh, educating girls, according to the report, has proven that uh, to have both economic returns and integrational uh, impact. How do you see this working out? Looking at uh, that uh, certain regions or, of the country do not really see the import or the importance of uh, you know, educating the girl child? Yes, I think um, that will go a long way. Um, I'm in support of that, and I think that will really 
um, effect the uh, um, affect and really take care of a lot of things regarding uh, poverty. But you know, so many times we talk about the girl child, the girl child education. I still also like to just say education of our young people. Mm. You know, the, be boy, no boy be or girl. girl. Emphasis on any particular because, sense. Yes, because you know, when you look at certain parts of the country, even the guys are not even educated. Mm. And we can see pictures of what we've been having all over the country of uh, like um, custodian homes in quotes mm -hmm. that became um, detention homes. Yeah, torture so homes. We, and the, like torture homes. So all these things are affecting the rate of poverty because these people we had is instances whereby some of them said they were being put in the family way, the girls amongst them. So and you keep having people that are not going to school, people that are not educated. And what did um, the Indians do? They took out 271 million people in 10 years out of poverty. Out of poverty. How were they able to do it between 2015, to 20, 2005, 2006, and 2015, 2016? They concentrated on five key areas. Number one is food subsidy and other necessity. Can so we do that now? We, we are doing something that's Looking close at the to state that. of Looking internal security? Uh, yes, we, we are doing something close to that. We know when we do all these conditional cash transfer. transfer. Another one is, because I want to take it one at a time quickly, another one is, you know, increased access to loans. So you see BOI, you see Bank of Greek doing something about that. But this has to be structured because of the Nigerian factor so that we have a template whereby these things can be gotten back. And we can quickly measure the and impact. Yes, and recycle. Mm. Another thing that they said is um, improved, they did, uh, was improved um, agri mechanisms and, so, and, and support, um, uh, what's it called now? Like the fertilizer, for, uh, price support. Yeah. For like the fertilizer stuff that we're already doing. So all those things, then the final two, very, very important, promoting education. Hmm. They didn't think, they didn't Which really think about, aspect, yes, yeah. we were talking about they, they, Because even in India, and that's why you see a lot of rape happening, the guys are more than the ladies. ladies. So they, they couldn't have focused on the ladies. <laughs> so they focused on, on, the, the on, on, on education of all the people. Now, the last one is promoting family planning. Mm. We've not started anything about that. You know, you, you, views on this. our views to, to this. Yeah, so we have to do something about that. And maybe if I have time, we, we'll talk about the Chinese model too. Because 850 million was taken out of poverty. Do you 30, believe the Chinese model years. will work for Nigeria? Yes, because they did so something. You know, what, they had just one, one child policy. For, one works for all those people. We have to domesticate all of this. All of this. What yeah. worked for them? can work for us because we have the same tendencies. We have the same population, mm -hmm. um, you know, escalation. We have, you know, multi-tribes and all that. So we have identities in mm -hmm. so many ways. But the only thing is when the federal government is doing something, we want the state and local government to follow suit yeah. so that we can intensify because it's not something you can do in four, yeah. five, six years. Absolutely. It has to be consistent input before you get the desired result. All right, all right. Shijibomi Adibi Bennett, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Well, joining us now is a public affairs analyst, Shijibomi Adebi Bennett. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much. Now, you, you would recall that uh, the president at some point said that he intends to lift about 100 million people out of poverty. And then he, we also look at the social intervention programs of the government. But we've been looking at how states are also joining forces to ensure that uh, the government's intention it really gets to the people. When you look at the states, the revenues, or you look at the capacity of each state and how the state governments have tried to perhaps, uh, or let, let's say, work closely with governments in, on achieving this aim, how would you evaluate how states are actually um, put into, to, to let's say pen to paper when it comes to this issue of lifting people out of poverty, ensuring that government's intention really gets to the people, really? I don't think the states have really complemented the federal government's effort a lot. We've had states, um, some very peculiar states, <coughs> try as much as possible to do something. I think in as much as um, the former government um, in Ocean State... Do they have the capacity in the first place? 
the, the capacity is always there. Because the first thing you have to consider is the human capacity. So how do you take them to flight? How do you leverage on that? Like I was, um, let me quickly put it this into perspective. Like the Chinese uh, model, they leveraged on the human capacity. <laughs> okay. And how did they do that? They have a lot of people, so they made sure that they expanded their labor capacity. And how do you do that with labor? You need power. So if the federal government is doing something in terms of power, bringing cements in, doing something, so states should be focused okay. and try to do something even before that time comes. <laughs> Let's look at Edo, Edo State, for example. They've done like um, a Silicon Valley in a small way, yeah. whereby artisans are, you know, um, converged in one place. Mm -hmm. So anything you want to do, you any kind of artisanship, you get them there. The power is not a problem there. So you can have clusters like that. So the federal government started that, having Araria, Sambun, Gewi, and the Sura market here, powered, 24-7 yeah. power yeah. supply. So what are the states but doing? You, you know what, in all of this now, federal government is doing that part in those areas. What about the general populace? We have the, 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 the population, just like China did. But how do we use this population to drive economic growth so that everyone is empowered, everyone can re start a business and remove himself from the poverty clock rather than the government actually doing that? Or waiting for the government. Or waiting for the government to do that. Yes, the, 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 that's the, um, what we're still talking about. That's the, the, creating, creating an enabling, enabling environment. environment. Yeah. So the enabling environment has to be there. What did China do again? You know, I haven't talked about the Indian model. They made sure that they, 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 there was infrastructure in rural areas. It, Nigeria and China have opposite um, characteristics when it comes to that because China encouraged people to move to the urban areas okay. from the rural areas. Mm. There are areas that are really, really the poor, extremely poor people. So encourage that. They even did urban um, subsidy. Mm. Then they, do, they did rural pension. So they did all these things, and in 37 years, 850 million is a lot of people. Now, and that's World Poverty Index. That's uh, in World Bank. And we are looking at 10 years. years. Yes. yes. So, so, it, so it means that at every, every successive government that, that came into play in India followed that footprint. In China. In China. If, if, in India as well, but we're talking about China now. They follow that footprint. Okay. So, and what did they, the infrastructure was there? In the yeah. rural areas, you link the rural areas to the urban areas. Yeah, so right. the, we can talk about the federal government routes, but they are just a bit of the roads in Nigeria, just like it's something kilometers out of 900 and something square kilometers. We have so to what leave it are here the now. states doing? doing? Very pertinent question. Thank you, Shinjibomi Adibi Bennett, for your time.